New Relic Insights enables you to quickly and easily build customized dashboards to visualize data about your software. You can also package dashboards together as data apps, making it easy to share and access your insights data even if you aren't experienced with writing queries or using a database. This tutorial will cover how dashboards and data apps work together in Insights, how to create and edit a dashboard, and how to create and edit a data app. I'll start by going over some of the important differences between a dashboard and a data app. A dashboard in Insights is a single page that can display your data using all kinds of widgets such as billboards, pie charts, and histograms. These charts are constructed from queries written in the New Relic Query Language, or NRQL. Dashboards are part of your Insights account. You'll know you're looking at a dashboard if you see the Insights menu bar on the left. Data apps, on the other hand, are somewhat separate from your Insights account and are made up of linked dashboards that create a curated, application-like experience. Even users who don't know NRQL or aren't as comfortable navigating the full Insights account can explore their business data using data apps. Before I jump into creating a dashboard and a data app, I want to touch briefly on how they work together. Any dashboard in your account made by any user who set viewing permissions to visible to others in my account or editable by others in my account can be copied into a data app. Once copied, the original dashboard and the new page in the data app are separate pages and any changes made to one will not be reflected in the other. While each page in a data app functions like a dashboard, allowing you to add charts to these pages just like you would a dashboard, you cannot copy a data app page to dashboards or to any other data app. So it's usually best to start by building a dashboard and then copying it into any data app you want. Let's try it now. First, I'll navigate to the Dashboards page by clicking on All Dashboards in the left bar menu. Notice I have options to sort by name, popularity, when it was last edited, my favorites, dashboards I made, and a search field to filter by other users or a specific dashboard name. This is helpful if you have an active account with lots of users making dashboards. However, if you're new to Insights, you won't see any dashboards yet. That's okay, because we're going to make one right now. From the Dashboard page, I can create a new dashboard by selecting the green Create Dashboard button in the upper right corner. I can also create a new dashboard by clicking the green plus icon in the menu bar to the left. Both options open a page where you can give your new dashboard a title. I'm going to name mine What People Watch. I can change the permission settings to be private just to me, visible to others in my account, or editable by others in my account. Next I'll enable the filter. The default setting for the filter is disabled, but we'll need it later on. Although it will be enabled automatically once we start linking charts, it's good to know about this setting if you want to filter a dashboard in the future. I can also change the icon for the dashboard using the drop-down menu to the left of the title. Notice the trash icon on the far right. Careful with this one. This is how you delete the whole dashboard. Finally, I'm going to save my dashboard by clicking Done Editing. Once my dashboard is created, I can add a shortcut by clicking the star in the upper right corner to favorite this dashboard, and it will appear in my left bar menu. I'll be able to change any of these settings later with the Edit button. Now that I have a dashboard saved, I need to add some charts. Earlier, I went into my Insights account Data Explorer page and picked some attributes from my data that are relevant to my work. Then I wrote a few questions using those attributes. And finally, I turned those questions into queries and saved them in my Query History Favorites. I'll go back to my Favorites in the Query tab and click on the query I want. Notice that if I just click on the query, a pane opens with the chart. I can add the chart to my new dashboard directly from here using the drop-down button Add To and selecting my new dashboard. But I want to add a few other pieces of info to this chart, so I'm going to click the Run button at the top to open the editing pane. I'll select the chart view I want, give the chart a name, some additional information in the Notes section, and then select the dashboard I want to add it to. This takes me right to my new dashboard with the chart on it. I'm going to add a few more charts using my query favorites so I can show you some really great editing features in Insights dashboards. Okay, now that I have a few charts to work with, I want to add some details and move charts around a bit. So I'll click the Dashboard Edit button in the upper right corner. From here, I can move charts around. I can enlarge a chart by clicking and dragging in the bottom right corner. I can also add new charts using the Query bar at the top 
or click the Edit Query icon on an existing chart if I want to adjust the queries to show slightly different information. Careful when you click the Edit icon. Right next to it is the Trash icon, which will delete your chart. I'm going to edit this bar chart to show a list of video tutorials instead of embed locations here. Once I make the changes I want to my query, I'll click the Run button to generate a chart that reflects my query changes. I'm also going to change the title of my chart and then click Save Changes. I want to note here that if you want to edit the query and the title or information, it's important to do the query changes first. Click the Run button to update the chart and then make changes to the title or notes. You'll lose your notes and title changes if you click the Run button afterwards. I can also add a copy of a chart from another dashboard to my new dashboard. I'll just navigate to the dashboard with the chart I want. Click the blue Edit button to put the dashboard in edit mode, and then click the Edit Query icon on the chart I want to copy. Once the Edit pane is open, I'll use the Add a Copy To drop-down option below the Save button to add a copy of this chart to my new dashboard. One other thing about these charts, if I click the Embed option, a window pops up with the embed code you'll need to embed the chart in a page on another website. There is a note at the bottom that you can see all your embeddables under the Manage Data tab in Insights. If you ever need to embed a chart, this is the way to get that done. You won't see other charts in your embeddables list, however, until you open a chart and click that Embed button at the top. I'm going to add a few other charts and finish editing my dashboard. When I'm done editing my dashboard, I'll click Done Editing. And now I have some really great charts with live data that's updating in real time displayed in this dashboard about what tutorials people watch. I can get a closer look at any of these charts by clicking on the full screen icon to enlarge it. And although this live data is already really exciting, I can make this even more helpful by adding interactivity to the charts. To do this, I'm going to link a chart on this dashboard to the whole dashboard. That link will make each data point in the chart a clickable link. So when I click any data point on that chart, it will create a related filter for the dashboard. I'll show you what I mean by this first and then go over how to do it. Here I see three billboard widgets showing me the total view count for all videos, the total count of engaged viewers, and the total count of the viewer bounce rate. When I mouse over the info icon in the middle billboard, I see that engaged viewers means viewers who watched at least 90% of the tutorial. And in the last billboard, I see bounce rate means viewers who only watched 30% or less. Below that is a heat map of tutorials showing me how much of the tutorial viewers watched by the shade of blue in the bar. Darker means more viewers. To the right is a bar chart listing the locations where people watch tutorials. Let's take a look at the heat map of tutorials first. If I click on the tutorial Improving Performance with APM, each of the billboard widgets at the top adjusts to reflect data only about this tutorial. Now I see that almost two-thirds of viewers who watched the Improving Performance with APM tutorial watched all, or almost all, of the tutorial, and only about one-third of viewers watched 30% or less of the tutorial. Let's take a look at another tutorial, Intro to Alerting. Now I see that over half of the viewers watched at least 90% of the tutorial. I also noticed that about a third of these views were on the New Relic Docs site. Since I want to know about viewers on the New Relic University website, I'll also click on the bar NRU Home in the bar chart for embed locations. Now I can see data about the Intro to Alerting tutorial only for viewers who watched it on the NRU website. And I can see that the total view count for this video was 113 views, about two-thirds of which were viewers who watched at least 90% of the tutorial, and about one-third of viewers watched 30% or less. I can also search for a data point not shown in the charts. For example, if I want to know more about the tutorial for installing the Linux server monitor, I can type the title into the search bar at the top and add that as a filter for the dashboard. This linking feature makes filtering data so easy. Just by clicking around, I can get all kinds of really useful information about what tutorials get viewed the most, how much of a tutorial people watch, and where it's most likely to get watched. So now let's go over how to make a dashboard interactive like this. Right now, there are only two types of charts whose data can be linked. These are the bar chart and the heat map. So in the dashboard I just made, I'll first click Edit and then scroll down to the bar charts I want to link. Here I'll click the Edit Query icon to open the editing pane. Then I'll select the drop-down menu Choose Target Dashboard to select the dashboard I want to link the chart to. The chart I select will be filtered whenever a bar on this chart is clicked. 
If I were to choose a different dashboard, such as how people watch, I would be taken to that dashboard when I click on this chart in this dashboard. The new dashboard would automatically be filtered by the data I clicked on. I'll go over linking multiple dashboards in a moment. For now, I only want to filter this dashboard, so I'll go ahead and pick the current dashboard option. Once a chart is linked, a button to remove the link will appear so I can unlink it at any point. I'll click Save Changes, and now the chart is linked. There is another way to link a chart. Notice if I create a new heat map, I don't have an option to link it to anything in the editing pane. To link it, I first need to save changes and then mouse over the new chart to see the link icon now visible next to the edit icon. I'll click on this to open a window where I can select my target dashboard. I can link bar charts this way as well. Now my charts are linked to my new dashboard. I'll click done editing and we're ready to try it out. I'm going to click on each of my linked charts to make sure it worked and I can see the chart data resetting with each filter I add. I'll call this a success. Now that I have a dashboard built, I'm ready to create my data app. In my Insights account, on the left bar menu, I can click on the Data Apps tab to see my data apps. Notice the green plus icon in the left bar menu. As with dashboards, I can create a new data app using this icon. Since I want to view all my data apps, I'll click the Menu option instead. From here, I can click on the data app I want to view, or click on the blue Create a Data App button in the upper right corner. So I'll go ahead and create a new data app right now. A window pops up asking me to select an icon and give my data app a title, which will be part of the URL for the data app. I can also add a description and change the permission settings. Once I'm ready, I'll click Create. This takes me immediately to my new data app where I can begin adding pages and charts. You'll notice that the layout is exactly the same as the dashboard we just made with a query bar at the top, an icon, a title, an edit button, and a trash icon. There are two main differences that are important to note. First, notice the Configure Data App button to the left of the Done Editing button. This will open a panel with all kinds of important data app settings that we'll go over in just a moment. Second, I can add pages to the data app by simply clicking the plus icon at the top of the page above the query bar. This creates a new page that I can give a title and icon to, just like the first page. I can click through the pages using the tabs. Each new page functions like an individual dashboard, but with an additional feature. I can link a chart on one page to another page to create interactive filters that illustrate workflows and layers of increasingly detailed data. I'll show you this in a moment. First, let's add some charts. There are two ways to do this. I can add a chart right here from the query bar and build my dashboard right in the data app. The process for doing this is identical to building a dashboard. But remember, I can't move a new page in a data app anywhere else. I can, however, copy dashboards into a data app. Since I just built a dashboard, I'll go ahead and copy that into my new data app right now. To do this, I have to be in editing mode so the Configure Data App option is visible. This opens a window where I can add dashboards. I'll click on the Copy option and select my new dashboard from the drop-down menu. Now I can see my new dashboard in the list underneath. I'll close this window and there's a new tab with the dashboard I just added. I can click on the new tab to see my copied dashboard, which takes me out of editing mode. You'll notice that there's no query bar anymore. Don't worry, I can go back into editing mode, open the configuration panel, and on the right side, under Data App Settings, in the middle, is a checkbox for showing the query bar. This is handy when you want to create a data app without the distraction of queries showing at the top. But for our purposes, I do want the query bar to show, so I'll click that option now. Since we're in here, I'll go over a few other configuration options now. I can add a new dashboard right here, instead of clicking the plus icon at the top of the Data App page. I can click the Copy drop-down menu option to choose an existing dashboard. I can also change the order of the pages in the data app. When I hover over a row on the left, several blue icons appear. The up and down arrows change the order pages appear from left to right in the data app by moving a dashboard up or down in the list. I can click the I to hide or show a dashboard. I can click the edit icon to jump right to editing that page, and I can delete a dashboard by clicking the trash icon. Be careful, you can't recover a page once you delete it here. I'll go ahead and close the configuration panel now. I noticed that even though I had linked charts in the dashboard, 
When I click on these same charts in the copied data apps version, the links are gone. That's actually a good thing. I want to make sure all the links on this page are set up exactly right for this data app. So I'll go ahead and add those links now. Adding links in a data app is exactly the same as linking a dashboard. Finally, I'll show you a quick example of what it looks like when you link a chart on one dashboard in a data app to a different dashboard in the same data app. In this demo app, made with entirely demo data, we see a bar chart showing the number of free trials by country as well as a conversion funnel chart, a time series comparison chart, and a list of the top cities. I can click on a country to see the conversion rate, comparison, and top cities for just that one country. I can also click on a city and I'm taken to the second dashboard page where I can see the breakdown of browsers customers with free trials use, as well as a conversion funnel, a time series chart of operating systems for that specific city, and a table showing the number of companies and users in that city. Now that you know how to create and edit Insights dashboards and data apps, take a moment and try creating a new dashboard and data app using your data.